Spent the first four years of his professional boxing career in Venezuela, but only had a total of five fights. The thing we have going into this fight of knowing how competitive he will be. For the first nine or ten rounds, 15 seconds, now 10 seconds remaining in round number one. Between rounds, not to run from Espana. To corner, Lou Duba, that is, yelling to Taylor, that's the range, that's the range. Now, let him get his confidence back as the fight go on. You argue in the corner? Well, let's look for that, George. The left hook to the body is maybe his best fight. Good short right hand in. Well, you're right about the abrasion on Espana's forehead. I can see it now, George. And right now, in control of the fight. And good, solid right hand in close. Okay. Round three begins. You'll establish this communication again. A lot of argument and a lot of trust. The power. Mildred's waiting around for a good active jab. He's going to get hit with a lot of right hands. And there's a left hand. Sign his punches with his glove. But it's hard to mount an offense that way. The ring, the glove hits you even if they're not hard. Sounds like drum speeding. Boom! Because the spear of the knife that really, in instance, is not hurting. Right hand followed by a Spaniard. And eight rounds. Taylor's just had, like I said, the, the recent uh, defeat. Swinging from side to side with right and left, and Taylor's the gold medalist, one of the youngest gold medalists ever, had a brilliant early professional career, the top moment galore since then for Melzick Taylor. So he came on and won a well for years. I think already he's proven he's not a shot fighter. Got back of his life right now. He's most effective when he stays close. Round five begins in and various other lefts and rights which appear to have wobbled Melzick Taylor. He's having a tough ball away and he gets hit with this right overhand right. Like get that. closer. Get closer. You, you lay in a couple of punches, then stay close. <laughs> Try to slow this guy down. They never should have told Taylor to box this guy with such long arms. Should have been fighting like Taylor down. Right, they're trying to make him regret to the days when he was a boxer. I don't know, George. He's never had punch of a scheduled 12 for the WBA welterweight title. Melzick Taylor, still the title holder, lands a big in the gym in Northern Ireland every day. That's the same gym that produced, among others, the famous feather hook by Melzick Taylor to the body. Outstanding. Right hand also. Taylor fighting with new aggressive. A little closer. Well, you know, one thing Melzick can't ring, it is cavernous. There's a long right hand by Espana. Melzick Taylor in trouble again. Side. If he stays close, nothing is going to happen. Espana uses the left, sets up the right. Melzick is either. What we're seeing here is the limitations of Taylor and not the good news. He's done so seemingly at a loss as to how to do it. Espana has him in trouble are idiosyncratic. It's certainly an exact science. But over long haul, I'm of the opinion this is not a management decision that the problem is here. He had a fight of he could have beaten this guy in easily. But now he's being from the near his waist back up to his face and he's not Taylor as a small short welterweight can do with have the beginnings numerically of a mismatch. My punch count numbers in round. But as the fight goes, once you got a good jab like that, you can fight anybody, and even in their home. Espana kind of just lay that right hand. Eastwood, promoter and manager, into taking this Espana off. To stop in the fight. Two knockouts, that much punishment. Try again here. John Boyle, within moments of stopping the fight, Blue Dubas on the top step, and they both make the decision. Win more than you lose. 28-year-old Crisanto Espana, out of Venezuela. Crisanto Espana! Fighters, both fighters. I think it's an excellent fight. It's a great match for television. And uh, believe me.